we have a really, really nice collection of speakers today, actually starting from uh, undergraduate students uh, up to really, um, really, really successful group leaders. Uh, so I'm really glad about this great uh, composition and it's a real pleasure to, to share it. So we have uh, Siddhant Sharma today starting, giving the first talk. And uh, the first talk is about computational exploration of prebiotic chemical reaction networks. So Siddhant is joining us. He's a uh, undergraduate student from India, but uh, I think uh, some of you might already know him because he's been very proactive in getting in touch with uh, many people interested in astrobiology and prebiotic chemistry. Uh, so I'm always uh, really interested and uh, looking forward to, to his talks and to the interactions with him. Siddhant, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shabla. And I'll just share my screen right away. And do let me know if uh, it all works and, and you are able to hear me fine. Yes. You do. Yeah. So without wasting any time, and I hope I finish in 15 minutes. We see uh, while having, Yeah. While having more time for, for questions. OK. Hello, everyone. I'm Sidhan Sharma. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm currently going into my final year of undergraduate studies and I'll be graduating next year. And I'm today in the uh, in the wonderful meeting by Polish Astrobiology Society, which I'm very grateful of because I've, I've met so many people. I've worked with so many people, Stesto Marsh and, and their group. So through this medium, I'm going to be sharing with you a talk that a lot of you might have heard about it. I might have heard about my work, might have interacted with me, but it's, it's always good to have a good audience, good new audience. So. This work, as you can see on my screen, this work is computational exploration of prebiotic chemical reaction networks to, to further find network statistics such as autocatalysis to aid in origins of life. So we are a group of undergraduates from Blue Marble Space Institute of Science, which participated in Young Scientist program last year. And this work has been culmination uh, through that program with a wonderful mentor, uh, Dr. Jim Cleese, which from LC, and all our wonderful collaborators, such as Marcus Meringer from DLR, uh, Germany, Jacob uh, Anderson from Southern Denmark University, uh, Juan Chen from National Magla, Florida, uh, some funding from LC Origins Network and my personal funding from SETI Forward Award through uh, supporting undergraduates for Origins of Life research. So without wasting any more time and thanking all these people, all the wonderful people that I've worked uh, for making this work successful and hoping for some good results. So what we wanted to do is develop a computational workflow, a workflow in where uh, a software you can you can call it a software or a, or, a, or a pipeline through which you input a bunch of reactions it processes those reactions and gives out a reaction network and then computes uh, network statistics such as autocatalysis is one of our uh, key definitions of autocatalysis to figure out how simple say simple molecules combine together combinatorially to form complex molecules such as as what happens with origins of life species and in 2020 and 2021 you you have heard about uh, about a really good paper from from a polish group uh, dr grisboski that that dwelt with uh, this phenomena and there are people who are trying to uh, complement experimental methods experimental reaction networks through computational methods such as ours and chem informatics so what we did was we took reactions such as alkaline degradation of glucose and formos and others that I, I won't be able to talk today due to uh, the interest of time. What we did was we, we combined those molecules in, in a chemical uh, chemical schema that the computer understands, which is smiles, and we defined a bunch of rules. Applying graph theory and graph grammars, what are rules? Rules as in life is the way uh, one behaves. So rules are the chemical transformations a molecule has to undergo. For example, if I have a tautomerism, I want to show tautomerism on my computer for glucose, I'll write a rule for, for uh, tautomerism, and that's a rule in, in graph theory. Then we define some input molecules, which are, are say, glucose plus water through alkaline degradation of glucose and the uh, normal formless reaction. And uh, this is a very key fundamental reaction in, in prebiotic chemistry. Then using graph grammar theories, we expanded this network and then a lot of things will happen, which I'll be going to talk in my further uh, future slides. This work has been uh, is going to be released as a preprint very soon, and I'm hoping to share the results with all of you. Now, this is how we use graph grammars through our collaborator, Jacob Anderson from, from Southern Denmark University. We use a graph grammar based package, which is more. Other people use reaction mechanism generator, but this is what we found was most 
uh, best way to generate networks faster and less computationally expensive because we didn't have access to HPCs or clusters and we were a bunch of undergraduates with limited uh, knowledge of chemistry, knowledge of chemistry, chemical intuition, limited chemical intuition. So we wanted to find a way that can generate it on our computers uh, spread all across the world. So here's a basic example of how a rule written. So I wanted to make a radical from a bond and I want to break this bond to make a radical. So this is how I'll, I'll write a rule to subtract a proton. And this is how these simple rules can, can uh, go into chemical transformations for say, uh, shift space, keto keto totemism, shift totemism, Michael addition, and all the very fundamental 50-40 uh, reaction rules that we looked at, very fundamental organic chemical reactions. So what, what I did was, is what we did was, is, is it reliable techniques? Yes, the reaction rules were constrained. They were picked out through our mentors or, or, or Dr. Cleves through I, and they were not, uh, they were really chemically tested through chemical intuition. Then the post-generation filtering of BAB substructures. So we have a list of substructures that we don't want in our chemical reaction networks. We don't want that. So we compiled a list of structures and whenever a structure was detected, it was removed. So all the forbidden nodes were removed, all the all the bad, uh, bad uh, say, bad unstable uh, structures were removed, such as uh, those violating bread rule or those having semi carbons, three carbons that we don't want in a, in a carbohydrate chemistry reactions. The set of rules were chosen manually based on chemical intuition, and we never uh, relied across a database such as reactions to pick uh, chemical intuition or pick reaction rules for us. Now, comparison with literature, yes, we wanted to build on whatever my, my computer or our computer is producing to experimental literature based results. So we looked at a paper by Yang and Montemary in 1996 that dealt with uh, alkaline degradation of glucose. And we were able to match 96% of our molecules on our computer to that paper. So we took those structures in that paper, converted it into a formula that the computer understands. We matched it, matched as in substructure matching through chemical informatics, and we were able to match 96% of structures. So what about FOMOS and what about the others? We were able to match 100% of the structures from Decker and Schwer 1982 paper and Ombran. Uh, Omran et al. paper from uh, 2020, where they used experimental methods to study formal reaction. And this is very important to, to match uh, experimental results with the computational theory. So comparison with highest resolution mass spectra, yes, we did some comparison with the mass spectra that was generated in the lab at LC and at National Mag Lab by our collaborator Juan Chen. And Whatever molecules we, have, we were producing in this reaction network through the application of these rules and, and graph theory and uh, and say a bunch of uh, reactions, we were able to match it through uh, the mass spectra that was uh, generated in the lab. So as you can see here, what is the generation? So whenever a, a molecule is, is processed, all the reaction rules are applied to it. Once all the rules are applied, once the process ends, it again goes back. So the going back from one generation to another is, is the going back from one reaction to other is termed that generation. So whenever all the rules are applied to all the molecules that are formed and it again goes back, this is called a uh, run of reactions. So as you can see, whenever we move forward through uh, the interest of computation in the generation when we had 16 new species and it took very less time. But as we were moving forward to generation and I'm talking about just glucose because in farmers we had six, uh, six generation. So you can see how combinatorially uh, the explosion of this chemical space happens. So it, it, it was manageable till some points, but it was not manageable once it reached five generations. And even with a powerful workstation like ours, we were not able to uh, explore the whole chemical diversity and what we hypothesize that once all the generation of the of the reaction rules and reaction networks are processed we will reach at a point where all the chemical uh, diversity has been explored and all the species has been explored that could be explored from this reaction network but that would require some high performance clusters and high performance computing so what we did was we did some basic descriptor analysis furthermore uh, so as to have some network analysis we did some basic descriptor analysis such as physical chemical properties of whatever molecules we are getting and that will delve us into uh, more concrete phenomena such as calculating solubilities or calculating partition coefficients and how these molecules behave in, in phase separated behaviors. Then we compared it to some biological databases and some people might, might comment that uh, uh, keg or uh, say reactions are not prebiotic databases and this, that's a problem in prebiotic chemistry. We don't have specific databases that have prebiotic chemical reactions. But we this is our computed set and uh, here, as you can see on the graph, we were not able to match any of that. Uh, a, a lot number of structures suggesting that there's a lot of chemical diversity either waiting to be explored or either that is not uh, characterized in, in these databases such as keg or human metabolome database or equal metabolome database now moving on we wanted to look at autocatalytic cycles and this is a wonderful phenomena 
people are looking at autocatalysis dr albert is looking at uh, autocatalysis but in a lab based system since we we wanted to look at that uh, in the autocatalytic phenomena and out of equilibrium reactions on our computer we devised and declarative and imperative algorithms such as ford fritz's in algorithm in a graph uh, say database which is neo4j why we why we looked at neo4j because as as we were moving through our workflow we always use graph grammars or graph theory and it made sense to use neo4j which which makes processing the cycles querying the cycles and querying for specific patterns for example if i want to have a autocatalytic cycle having say glucose uh, as a as a catalytic node i can code that query in neo4j very easily and that's why we wanted to we proceeded with that and i think this is one of the key examples of using an industrial uh, application for an academic thing uh, where where people either they code up their own algorithms but we went for with the neo4j thing which is uh, like keeping up with the industry and it it moves very forward forward now some sort of autocatalysis we wanted to have an autocatalytic chain and autocatalytic pathway uh, in in our reaction networks and we wanted to look at how a feeder molecule or how a feeder molecules moves ahead and in autocatalysis one molecule reacts with another and then it reacts uh, with the starting initial products to form a chain of reactions and we thought that uh, the autocatalytic cycles are the way simple molecules turns into complex and it evolves to a lot many things and i think this is Uh, a common consensus in prebiotic chemistry so molecules in the networks that tend to have many more incoming edges than the outgoing reactants that that we formed suggesting that the molecules in the network are more likely to be products than reactants so it it, it kind of uh, moves towards the way uh, our our the chemical diversity is increased now one more question one very key question is that how do we uh, have we like pruned the networks based on spontaneous and non spontaneous cycles yes we did because uh, uh, in in the chemical diversity there might be a lot many reactions that are spontaneous there might be a lot more that are non spontaneous so we wanted to have only the spontaneous ones and then they go back in the reaction and gives us a more constrained set to work uh, with this autocatalytic workflow so what we did was since we never had any access to hpcs or clusters so quantum chemistry is out of the pocket we used a group contribution methods which is equilibrator and we tagged all our molecules with the thermochemical information that is delta g and then Uh, in the cycles, we we looked at how the cycle length is evolving with the delta G. Say, oh, the delta G is negative, which is uh, the, uh, the condition for the spontaneous reactions. And we found that only cycles of five and and say seven lengths were were spontaneous. And that's how we were building our library. So this is a one characteristic example where pyruvic acid is a catalytic molecule, but we have two thousand cycles more. And it's it's really interesting to see how. Uh, uh how we can characterize the cycles in a database and how we can search it more through the graph query patterns now this is a spin off okay yeah now there's uh, this 3 minutes yeah. now this is a spin off by one of the one of the other undergraduates i i mentored through this ysp program so we wanted to look at we we built uh, the reaction network such as formos glucose pyruvic acid but we wanted to see if the nucleoside analogs such as the one developed by dr cleves and and his group at lc can we find those nucleoside analogs in our reaction networks and we we did through substructure matching we were able to find some amount of matches in our in our uh, nucleoside uh, say in our chemical reaction net, uh, chemical rea- uh, reaction network representations through the nucleoside libraries that we have preferred in silico so it's it's really uh, a fascinating thing that you can compare biomolecules and evolution of these biomolecules such as uh, adenine or adenine nucleoside evolving in this chemical reaction network and then it can be for more towards other biomolecules as well now future questions just uh, since i'll be moving to the question answer round what are the future questions that we wanted to explore we wanted to explore how these different reaction networks in in nature or in in chemistry you won't have single reaction network that is working you will have a culmination of different reaction networks and how these reaction networks converge about different prebiotic temperatures and phs which is a very hard hard phenomena to encode uh, uh, in 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 computational chemistry solving the th- stereochemical workflows through uh, through uh, graph grammars as we know the the stereochemistry is very hard to encode uh, uh, as the say the chain of the molecules move for, forward through four carbons you can do something with chemical informatics in four carbons but when you are moving with six or seven carbons it's very hard to encode the stereochemistry so using stereochemistry in graph grammars is a very good thing in the in the future things and calculating the kinetics of reactions yes we wanted to know how fast these reaction networks are working so all of these strategies how can we explore the chemical uh, 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 exploration of these chemical reaction networks are can be seen in my coming paper uh, that we have submitted right now 
So that brings me, yes, again, that brings me to the end of my talk. And I would really love to acknowledge all the wonderful people that I've worked as an undergraduate in the past one, one and a half years with people from Poland, with people from Australia, with people from Japan and Sweden and, and all places. Some of them have spoken here. Some of them are going to be speaking. And yeah, thank you for this opportunity. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Siddharth. Uh, really good timing. So we have some time to, to talk about your very interesting presentation. Um, so feel free to ask questions here, but I will ask uh, the first one. Uh, um, so uh, when I look at these models, I realize that many of, of, of uh, well, that, that, that you need some values, basically. So when you, for example, want to consider thermodynamics, you need to take it from a database, or when you look at the kinetics, it looks similar. So how, how is it with your model? Do you actually yeah. uh, use some databases uh, to um, feed some data into this and then predict uh, the distribution of products? Yeah, so talking about thermodynamics, the, the group contribution method, which is equilibrator, and that works only at 25 degrees Celsius, because as you know, if, when you are talking about different temperatures, you might move to quantum chemistry rather than just using semi-empirical or, or group contribution methods. So that takes its basis from KEG. So as you know, KEG, while it's not a perfect prebiotic library or prebiotic database, it, it serves uh, the reactions well. And reaction well and it ha it calculates the the delta g's for formations and reactions through keg and that's how uh, we are able to populate our say cycles or or say delta g values for a particular reaction through uh, running this uh, uh, these semi empirical methods talking about rmg which which can which can be used to calculate the kinetics of these reaction networks again that takes uh, into account the substructures uh, it ha also has a list of substructures and it also takes into account the group contributions from even from keg and other databases so yes those libraries reference uh, other databases and we are building upon we are building upon on their methods uh, that that sounds really interesting because if i understand collect correctly that's actually the difference between your method and the method that you showed uh, for example by Chibovsky. so Chibovsky just looked at uh, um databases of organic yeah. reactions right yeah exactly and That's... you feed in you feed in some data yeah that so that, yeah. we are more more into the the chemical intuition and then seeing what what shouldn't be produced and what should be produced and this is uh, i think the lacking thing for for uh, databases such as these you don't e ever get an accurate representation of the diversity mm -hmm. Uh, so I was also wondering uh, about about the actual well uh, taking into account that you that you take uh, or pre-calculate this delta g. Do, do, do you have an idea about uh, the accuracy of, of these predictions? Has anyone tested or benchmarked this? Yeah. So people have, as you know, people in, in prebiotic chemistry or even the computational chemists in prebiotic chemistry. Uh, uh, kind of hand wave about about the things, but yes, if you are looking at group contribution methods or or say uh, group additive methods such as Benton Benson's group of additivity, and you compare it to more uh, uh, semi more advanced semi empirical methods such as XTB, yes, there might be a lot amount of accuracy errors, and I don't think anyone has tried to, in in my knowledge, but it's a good thing to to just just benchmark it with respect to prebiotic chemistry, what uh, what results are better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we have uh, time for, for a short answer to, to one more question. And actually, Albert just wrote. So uh, Albert writes, great talk, Sid. Uh, did you use some sort of automated method to compare the computation data set to the high resolution mass experimental data? Or was it just done with the standard software packages you can get with whatever instrument you used? Yeah, that's that's a wonderful question and i actually forgot to mention it in my talk since running uh, through the time yes we we build our in-house scripts to to compare the mass spectra data that is collected out from from say a mass spectra instrument and then matching out with our our theoretical models we wrote our our scripts in our kit and Ambit, which handles the tautomers and which handles all the chemical re representations well but there are several automated reaction net uh, libraries that can do this mass spectra matching so if if uh, you want to have a quick solution this yes going for those libraries work fantastic thank you Sithant. uh it was really nice uh, listening to you 